um, there was a question put to you about uh, mentors, career progression, and so forth. But I'm wondering if you could reflect on kind of the career journey and the various inflection points that you experience so that you can give some insight to aspiring leaders here today, what to expect. And maybe there's some uh, many similarities in terms of their uh, career progression that they will witness that you experience. And maybe you could give some guidance in terms of what they can expect as they move to new levels in their careers. Sure. Uh, you know, I would say the foundation, and this is what I learned from my parents um, who didn't have the opportunity to go to college, but their, their ethic, they you know, grew up during the Depression, and they had an extremely strong work ethic. And that is something that has always guided me. So, you know, um, work hard is number one. And, but follow your passion, because if you love what you do, the hard work that you put in is not going to be, you know, tr torturous. And so I think follow your passion, love what you do, you'll do it better. Um, and then, you know, there's no substitute for hard work. So I'd say that's point one. I would say the, the second is, um, you, you know, you've got, you've got to listen. And, you know, so much of that as you rise in your career of leading people is understanding people. And it's, it's about listening and, and valuing diversity um, and recognizing when you walk in the room. I, I heard a quote yesterday um, where it said, uh, you know, as, as a CEO walks into, this was referring to the board, they don't need to know the answer when they walk into the room, but they should be pretty sure that when they walk out, they have the best answer. And so it's, it's valuing your team. One of the things I look for is I want to have, uh, I want to have constructive conflict and debate uh, my team uh, right now at General Motors, 50% uh, of them have been with the company like me for 30 plus years. 50% have been with the company less than six years and come from other industries and other OEMs and, and have you know, a very geographical diverse experiences. So when we get in a room, if we can really debate issues, I think we're gonna make a better decision. And so it's listening, it's valuing that kind of debate I think is, is very important. But as an individual, love what you do and then work really hard. And don't worry so much about, you know, you ought to understand your career path and, when, and, and be actively knowing what you want to accomplish. But do every job like you're gonna do it for the rest of your life. Because that kind of ownership of the job, you know, don't, you don't want to be renting the job, you want to be owning the job. Because when people see that kind of dedication and hard work, that's when you get noticed and that's when, you know, you're, you're being considered for additional responsibilities. So that would be just a, a handful of, of pieces of advice. What do you do when, when someone treats you that way, that, that you feel like they're, they're limiting you they're keeping you on the sidelines in some way relative to what you could provide in terms of talent? Well, I think first of all, assume goodness. Assume if somebody says something or does something that you say, wow, that, that I, I, if I choose to, I can interpret that and I can get really angry about that and I can be, wow, they don't, they don't value a woman or they don't value this or they don't value that. And so my first is to, it's kind of to assess intent. Because sometimes people, we all come from a different background and we have different learning and different perceptions. So it may just be that you know, they have a perception and, and, and it's, not, it's not personal, it's not about me. So I think that often there's an opportunity to have a conversation. Um, you know, there are times where you have to stand up for yourself and go have that conversation that you may think is a little difficult. But, um, and, and so you have to do that. And, and I think having a great relationship with mentors or with your supervisor that you can say, hey, you know, I understand this opportunity is available. Am I in consideration? If not, why not? And sometimes you may think you are, but you get an answer where, you know, you really do need to do some other things. Sometimes it's like, hey, you know what? I didn't think you were interested. So I think you have to be your own advocate, but I think it starts with, um, you know, a lot of times it's, it, there's, a, uh, there's something that you can perceive as negative and it really, it's a conversation, a way of, of really getting to understanding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So after, um, after getting uh, all this attention around being the first woman in, in this role, it was not that much longer that all of a sudden you're in the public eye in a very different way around the ignition switch um, issues. And, and, and you know, next thing you know, you're testifying in front of Congress and so on and so forth. But, but overall, you came into that like almost immediately it, it, at the beginning of your tenure as CEO, and you were given enormous credit for having handled that crisis in a very, very positive way. Can you, can you help us understand what you were thinking? Because crisis is just a way of life. It, they, they will happen. Mm -hmm. So how did you unpack that crisis in a way that ultimately you were given all the, all, all the kind of 
congratulations on having done such a nice job. Well, I think first it, it started, we had a great team. And uh, so there was a, a handful of us that said, okay, we've got a, and, and, and the one thing about a crisis is, the day one, you don't know everything that's going to happen. So you, you know, it comes to you in bits and pieces um, as, as the story unfolds and as you learn. And most people think, okay, it happened and you know everything and then what are you going to do? But you don't. Uh, so we had a small group of people um, and we met every day. And, but we were focused the year prior, um, a, a subset of us in the company had worked on what, what should the values of the company be. And we had values and they were fine, you know, teamwork, innovation, continuous improvement, but they were something that you could say about any company. And so, um, and actually Mark Royce, who is here, who's a, a graduate of Fuqua, uh, uh, we were able, we were working on what is really going to differentiate General Motors. And so it was around customer, it was around relationships, and it was around excellence. And so as, and it's easy to say those things and it's easy to, to work on those when things are going well. But we really used that as an opportunity to live those values when, thing, when it was hard, when, there were, you know, when we were facing pretty severe challenges. But putting the customer in the center, saying we were sorry, being transparent and, and committing that we were gonna do everything in our power to make sure it never happened again, that's what guided us through the entire crisis and as we learned and, and we adjusted. And you know, I'm really proud of the entire team and I also think it was so important for our workforce because your employees are wondering what's going on, what's gonna happen, and it was very important that we, we communicated regularly to our employees to let them know what was going on and they rallied behind us and I really think it cemented our values into the company uh, because they saw we were serious and we were gonna live them even when it was hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, thanks for coming. My name is Abdullah. Um, you touched up a bit upon this, but um, it's often said that through difficult times we learn the most. And so you're at the company at a very difficult time that just didn't, didn't just have business pressures, but a lot of colleagues going under personal pressures too because of the situation in the company. I'm wondering, once you looked at the community and when you looked at the company internally too, what was your main takeaway um, about a situation like that? You mentioned that crises maybe are hard to predict, but can, is there something that can be done and what can you learn from it? Well, clearly I think there's so much that you can do uh, to uh, per make sure the company is best prepared from a, you know, from a crisis perspective. One is having everybody understand the mission. Just an example, one of the things we did after we had the ignition switch recall, we put a program in called Speak Up for Safety because we really wanted every single employee to know if you see something that you're not sure it's right. Now, you know, if, if you're, you know, engineering this and there's a guy across the aisle who or, or that's that's working on it, go talk to him. But if, if, you know, beyond that, if you see something that you're worried about doesn't make sense, let us know. And, you know, we've celebrated the program of, of making sure people feel free to bring issues up. Um, having a strong um, compliance program and, uh, you know, a strong, we call our code of conduct winning with integrity. And you know, there's not a, a message when we talk to employees that we don't talk about, yes, we've got to perform and here's the goals we've got to achieve, but we've got to do it the right way. We've got to do it with integrity. And I think so much of tone at the top and making sure that's what under, people are understand, that's what is expected. And for the, you know, the very small, small, small percentage of people who don't, dealing with those people to make sure that everyone knows you're serious, I think is, is extremely important. Uh, and so I think there's a lot you can do to, to not just assume you're, you know, I assume we're going to be hit by cycles, but I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I've got a culture. Because when, a, when a, something that becomes a crisis, in its early days, it was generally solvable if it was brought forward. Uh, and so if we can get everyone saying, Here, here's the way we behave, here's our responsibility to the community, to the company, to our shareholders, and to ourselves, uh, and live those values, the issues that could grow into crises we can solve in, you know, as a matter of business. Uh, this new world. And, and Mary, how do you as a leader, because you've had to grapple with this, how do you deal with all those middle managers out there who for 20 years have been doing things one way, and all of a sudden you're saying, hey, there's a whole bunch of new stuff happening, and we've got to do things very differently than you have in the past. And by the way, you have to do it very fast. 
Well, I, I think it, it's it's not one thing. You have to do several things. First of all, you have to make sure, you know, to your point, they know where you're going. They know what you're trying to do, and you need to harness their energy because uh, you, middle management is actually really, you know, the people who are getting the work done. You know, they're they're the ones designing the cars, building the cars for us, getting them out there. So if they understand the mission, you know, I have found General Motors can go exceptionally fast. Uh, so it's communicating, but it's it, it's not just say, hey, do this. It's 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 the why, making sure they understand the why, why it's worth the hard work to get there. Um, I think it's also continuing to take structure out. I mean, if you have less layers, it's, uh, easier. it's easier. The game of telephone becomes simpler. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, people for so long uh, over the last few years wanted to talk about General Motors and the frozen middle, and you know, I finally declared it's melted. I mean, the people are moving quickly. We've taken out layers. We've become more efficient. And, and they're engaged because they believe in the vision of where we're going, not only that our core business of the traditional owner-driver model, cars, trucks, and crossovers, and what we may dream up next will be there, but also you know, fulfilling customer needs and, and creating value, whether it's in sharing, autonomous, the best connectivity, electrification, uh, and they're excited.